Hi guys, today I want to talk to you about my old books collection. If you know me then you know that I love books and I love reading and I also love collecting books. Books are what make me happiest in the world and so I love surrounding myself with books. And something that I've been getting into recently and over the past year or two is collecting old editions of books and I really wanted to share with you some of my favourites from my collection today. So when it comes to finding old books and deciding which ones I want to own there are a few things that influence my decision. I don't always go for the rarest or the oldest and I certainly don't go by price. I'm not looking for really expensive books because I just can't afford to do that. So one of the things that really influences me in deciding which books I want is I like to own books with stories behind them. Often they are books written by some of my favourite authors or authors I really like, or authors who I think have had a really big impact on literature. But there are also other books that I own in parts of my collection that I won't show you that are about things that interest me. Like I like finding old books about birds and nature because those are things that I really love outside of books. I'll talk about where exactly I got all of these books from because I got them in a variety of different places, but I found that one of the best places to find old books for really decent money is in charity shops in the UK um, like Oxfam Books I think are particularly good. They usually have dedicated old book section where you can find really good interesting books for very little cost. I also regularly look through things like Etsy and search for my favourite authors and see what comes up and I've also found some of these in other bookshops and online too. So I'm going to start by showing you my editions of Shirley by Charlotte Bronte, which is my favourite book of all time, and it was published originally in 1849, and so it has a long history of publishing, so I found some really nice books. The oldest book I own is this one. This is an 1891 edition of Shirley. It was originally in a set of the Bronte novels and this one is just Shirley. I found this online and was super pleased with myself and I love it so so much. It is such a treasured part of my overall book collection, not even just my old books. Originally this cost one shilling six pence to buy per volume, so this is what this would have cost the person who originally bought it. And the reason that I was so attracted to this edition was because it is published by Smith Elder and Company who originally published Charlotte's books. It's in pretty good condition seeing as though it is over 100 years old and I try and look after all of my books to the best of my ability and I'm looking into ways to make my process of looking after them even better now. One of the things when it comes to old books as well now that I own quite a few over a longer stretch of time is that I'm really interested in looking into book binding and how books were produced as the decades went by because if you look closely at this you can see that the pages aren't perfectly neat and there is a lot of difference in the quality of books. And then the other edition of Shirley I own is actually the most recent edition to my collection and it is a two volume set and I was so excited when I found these because I don't have any other two volume sets in my collection and I thought it was a really cool thing to own. So when books were published in the Victorian period, usually they were published in three volumes. That was what was most popular and what usually happened. And then as the years went by, they would be published in a single edition or a two volume edition. And the collection that these two come from is a 12 volume set of all of the Bronte's novels. This was published in 1893 by J.M. Dent and company and it has illustrations inside which is one of the things I most liked about it because one of the things I really like about a lot of these old books is that they do have detailed illustrations in such a beautiful style that you just don't see a lot in books anymore and I also think that these illustrations can tell us a lot about the people who lived at the time, the people who were reading those books and also as you chart the different editions you can often see how beauty standards have changed 
change because people are illustrating slightly differently and the characters look different and it's a good way of thinking about how literature and art combine. Also with this edition it says this volume is one of the first issue of this edition of Miss Bronte's Shirley and so I think it's such a lovely book to own. I love these so much and I really don't mind owning multiple copies of Shirley because it is my favourite book and these books have so much history behind them. On to some other recent purchases now and these aren't the most exciting of books but there was a story behind them and so I felt like I had to own them. So I have an edition of Romola by George Eliot and an edition of Elizabeth Gaskell's Mary Barton. I really liked these two when I found them, they're really compact editions and I think they're really lovely but the reason that I wanted to own these two so much even though I don't have a great attachment to either book is because of the inscriptions inside. So in the George Eliot one it says Margaret N Morgan Christmas 1910 and then in the Elizabeth Gaskell book it says Marjorie Christmas 1911 and one of the things I love most about old books is finding something and really loving the book and then looking inside and finding that somebody has written something in there and shown you when it was given as a gift. Lots of these books that I'm showing you were given as gifts to people and I really wanted to buy both of these because I didn't want to split them up. I didn't want somebody to buy one and somebody else to buy the other and then they'd never see each other again. It's been nearly 109 years and I couldn't be the person who split these two apart. I have another one like that now and this is an edition of Sir Walter Scott's The Fair Maid of Perth. I find that I can find Sir Walter Scott's books quite a lot for a really really decent price. I think this one was about two pounds or something like that because his books were so popular when they were published and then continued being popular throughout the Victorian period and slightly after but now they just don't have the same value to them which I don't understand because I really enjoy his books, I really enjoy his writing style even though it can be quite confusing and complicated and a little bit boring at times. I actually really like it for all of those reasons. So I got a set of these which I found at a local National Trust bookshop on one of their sites. Lots of the National Trust properties have bookshops attached and I love searching through their classics collection because I find books new and old that I really want to read. So this one had a lovely attachment inside that says it's the County School for Girls Bexhill on Sea. It was a prize awarded to Janet Portnell for good work low VA which I'm not sure exactly what that means. Dated July 1947 and it's signed by the headmistress which I really like. Um, lots of books were given as prizes and I have owned books that belonged in my family that were given as prizes which is really nice to own. I love the idea of giving a book as a reminder of something that you have done really well and that will carry you through for the rest of your life. I wonder if Janet actually liked The Fair Maid of Perth and I wonder exactly the route that it took to end up in my hands. Another one that I have recently acquired is one of my new favourite old books that I own. It is so cool and this is Victoria R.I. and Albert the Good, The Story of Their Lives by W.J. Wintle. This is a biography of Queen Victoria and Albert and I love Queen Victoria, you know how much I love the Victorians and so I originally found this book and knew that I wanted to own it and then I opened it up and inside was a lovely inscription. It says that it is the Metropolitan Association for Befriending Young Servants, the Canning Town branch specifically and it was presented to Amelia Jones for three years service, March the 3rd, 1908. And I was really intrigued by exactly what the Metropolitan Association for Befriending Young Servants was. And so I did some research and this was an association that was set up in order for people who had grown up in the workhouse to be trained to be good in service. Because when people were brought up in the workhouse, they were used to being told exactly what they were supposed to be doing and when. And so when it came to those children growing up outside of the workhouse, it could be very confusing for them to grow up in a family serving a family who would tell them different things and might not tell them exactly what they had to do. And so this association was set up in order to train them and also to prevent young girls to go into prostitution or to become alcoholics or addicts. And so it was something that was set up for the good of the children 
children who were brought up in the workhouse. I love this so much, I feel like it's such a me book, not only to talk about something of such historical significance that I had never heard of before, but also because it is a book about Queen Victoria and so I almost feel like it was waiting to be found by me on the shelf. All of these books I'm showing you are my favourites out of the ones that I own, but this is another one that I really, really love because this is The Famous Tragedy of the Queen of Cornwall by Thomas Hardy. And this is one that I have shown in previous videos before. It was a play that he wrote and I ordered it online because I couldn't find an edition anywhere. And then this turned up and I was so happy that it did because it is amazing. This book is a work of art. So I opened it up and this book was in the Cheltenham Public Library in the home reading department. And there is the library card in there that um, would be taken out and um, could be reserved and so I've got the original ticket which is amazing and also what I love about it is that you have the original stamps when it was taken out for example on the 4th of April 1924 right up until the 4th of January 1979 and so when this book was published Thomas Hardy was still alive and so I really do feel like this is a piece of history because as it was circulating through the library system Thomas Hardy was still alive alive and breathing and I find that is very cool. This is another one that I think is really cool. This is Feats on the Fjord by Harriet Martineau. Not a particularly exciting book. I wanted to read it because I'd been reading up about Harriet Martineau and I decided that I was going to try and find a copy. I couldn't find one anywhere, it's not really in print anymore or if it is I could not find a copy anywhere. So I went on to Abe Books and tried to find an edition of it and when it turned up it was this lovely old edition. But it isn't so much the actual physical book that I love about this. This is another one where it has a really cool inscription. So the inscription inside reads George Vernon Giddings with Auntie's Best Love, 21st of December 1916. And I was so curious as to who George Vernon Giddings could be. So I posted it on Instagram and mentioned that I was really curious about who it was. And some of you actually went away and did your genealogy research and found out who he was. I managed to find out one whether he'd survived the war which I really wanted to find out because 1916 was such an important crucial year in history and so when the findings came back it was discovered that he actually lived and was a young person in a local village to where I live somewhere that I've been before and knew and it just so happened that this book turned up and we were able to find out who owned it which I thought was so magical. And then the final book I want to share with you is one of the first old books I added to my collection and this is The Complete Works of Lord Byron which I have shared in a previous video. This has another inscription, it says to MS from CNW Christmas 1919. I love all these people who are buying their relatives or friends or people that they knew books for Christmas and writing in them so that years later, 100 years years later precisely I could open this book up and find out a bit more about who owned the book and who was reading it. I love this edition of Byron's poetry, it's really lovely inside and I try not to read it because it wasn't in the best condition when I bought it, it's quite knocked on the spine and just is a bit worse for wear so I try and give it as much loving care as I can but when I do peek inside it's really lovely to read his poetry in a way that doesn't feel really cumbersome like like some of my other Byron editions that I own in more modern editions. I also really love Byron but find a lot of his stuff quite intimidating, especially lots of his longer poetry. I just like this edition. I wish that they would reproduce this in a modern format that I could read without damaging this one. So those were my favourites of the old books that I own. I would love to know what old books you own, which are your favourites and which do you treasure. I'd love to know your stories behind them too. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!